Before I get started, let me throw out a spoiler warning. I'm going to be taking the beginner's guide and rooting through it piece by piece to put together a half-assed theory. It's only an hour and a half, so if you have $10, I would highly recommend you buy it. If you don't have $10, like me, then by all means, check out a Let's Play. If you're in need of recommendations, you can check out Super Best Friends, Geek Remix, uh, Bowling Otter and Lissy Sandwich, Jacksepticeye. Honestly, you can just type the game's name into YouTube and watch whatever catches your eye. And let me be clear, I've been that person before. You hear someone say, spoiler warning, and you go, nah, I'll watch this anyway, because they're going to give a general breakdown of the plot. I won't be doing that. The Beginner's Guide begs to be experienced, or at least seen. My first exposure to it was watching a Let's Play, because at the time, I didn't have the money for the cover charge. But watching someone else play it can be just as moving. So, please, I implore you, spare an hour and a half and go play it or watch it, whatever you can do. I'm not going to give a synopsis. I'll be here when you're ready. Okay, all caught up? Have you taken the appropriate time to emotionally recover? Great. Because now we have to clarify something that still gives people trouble to this day. This story is fictional. The day we, we meet in the game is a character. There is no coda. The Beginner's Guide isn't a biography. It's House of Leaves. Now, I have no doubt that Davy Reedon put a great deal of himself into the Beginner's Guide. It's entirely reasonable to make the assumption that Coda represents some part of the real life Davy Reedon. That's literally how art and creation work. This channel is as much a part of me as it is the games that I examine. It's the reason anyone can do what Jackson Pollock did, but you can't sell paint dribbled on a canvas to the tune of millions of dollars. But just for the moment, just for today, I want to examine the beginner's guide purely as a story. We'll travel together to a world where Coda is a real game designer and Davy Reedon is a shitty person, because there's something very interesting about Coda that I've seen people flirting with, but never quite closing the logical gap. See, I'm not breaking new ground to point out that there is something of the feminine in Coda's side of the story. Narrator Davy admits to being overly aggressive and trying to get their attention, and this is before we realize that he's been fudging details, so who knows how bad it really was. The voice that asks you to sacrifice yourself and escape from Whisper is female. One of the concepts in the idea room specifically says that you're playing a queen, dusting her treasures while the kingdom burns in flames. The only character model you ever see without a blockhead is a crying woman trapped in a prison when it makes its reappearance. The protagonist of Machine is clearly female. The only two songs that feature any kind of vocalization both have female singers. You get the picture. There's something gendered in Coda's games, but what has driven me insane is that most of the critiques I see that address this point then go on to say, well, but Davy always refers to them with male pronouns. And even if you try to focus on the fact that Davy is an incredibly unreliable narrator, the question is then raised. How could Davy possibly mistake a woman for a man? And really, every single trans and non-binary person in the room is shaking their heads as we speak. It's painfully obvious. There are more than a few lines during notes that really caught my eye. Uh, for example, he was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. His terrible secret, he kept it well. Maybe I'll feel real someday. Stop pretending you are other people. You close your eyes and wish for it really bad. There's a lot of wiggle room here still. The coda written by a real Davy could be a trans woman who's still not ready to come out yet, or they could be someone non-binary who likes writing and focusing on female characters because they're rare in games. They could be a trans man, or the list goes on. That's the thing with gender. While cis people are busy talking in binaries and dualities, we're over here with a sixth dimensional Cartesian plane discovering 80 new genders a day. I can imagine Coda looking at Davy, this idiot who messes around with their games in order to find a meaning that makes sense to him and realizing, <laughs> if I can't even trust him to respect the boundaries in my games, how in the world can I trust this guy to honor my pronouns? I clearly need to get him out of my life. So, there you have it. I have forever solved the beginner's guide. I know the truth now and so do you. Coda is trans. Probably. Maybe. Sort of. Kind of. Only not. 
when I first set out to make this video, my intention was just to outline the simple idea that Coda is a trans woman and that Davy either doesn't realize it or doesn't respect her identity. But then I realized that Coda could be plenty of other things and there just wasn't enough evidence to make that claim with confidence. Then I started looking more into the game and so many cool things cropped up. Uh, did you know that the beginner's guide is fashioned after the first 18 cards in a traditional tarot deck? Like right down to the prologue, chapter zero is the fool, the card zero. And tower is chapter 16, just as the tower is the 16th card in the deck. There's an entire analysis video right there. Never mind the fact that our mystery game creator is literally called Coda, and the Coda symbol is used for the game's icon on Steam. The Coda of a song is the resolution, the part where you take all the stuff you just did, alter it with some more fitting chords, and boom, you've got yourself a Coda. And yet the entire game is seemingly constructed without a true Coda. In Tower, Davy says, I think I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And he has a breakdown, and then he just leaves halfway through the epilogue. And there's no real resolution to the game, uh, only this realization that life goes on as you drift above this infinite labyrinth. I don't particularly care if you come away from this video agreeing with me that Coda might be a trans woman. As other reviewers have pointed out, that's my interpretation. It's all mine. I get to put it in a little bag and carry it around with me. Humans are meaning makers, and that's the meaning I made from this particular piece of art. It will mean something different to you. But what I think is most fascinating about the Beginner's Guide, and art as a whole, is that it can mean something different to every person. Sometimes you'll come away thinking you've just witnessed a very real, very personal story. Sometimes you'll finish it and go, I'm just like Dave here, I totally understand Coda. And in my mind, all those things are true at the same time. The Beginner's Guide is a mirror. For Coda, what was originally a simple puzzle became a place of solace. That dark space in the middle of the door puzzle was what matters most. Silence, reflection, thought, peace, and more. It's why they forced you to sit for an hour in a jail cell. It's why they focused so hard on prison games. I totally get that. I'm literally transitioning from one gender to another. Transitional spaces are kind of important to me. Davy is us while we're in those spaces. They're hard to understand and will completely misinterpret our hardships. We will stare into the abyss and see our souls laid bare, free of ego. We do stupid things because we don't like ourselves very much. Coda is us after the dark space, struggling to express our revelations and searching for creative energy. We become easy to misunderstand, and all we want is a way to contact our past self and tell them, you'll be fine. And then, then I think we become Davy again sure of ourselves, ready to buckle down and analyze the world. We know what we're talking about now that we've made it through the dark space, and we're going to tell everyone what to think, only... What's this? A new bump in the road, a new challenge, a new fall, and then we do something stupid again, because we don't like ourselves very much. I would say rinse and repeat, but that's not exactly right. There are no codas in life, but there aren't repeats either. The time signature constantly changes, and sometimes everything is in 16th notes, and sometimes you're forced to rest for dozens of measures. The only directions you get at the very top of the piece are two words. With feeling. My dad died a year and a half ago from a metastatic melanoma. In the course of a horrible, awful month, he lost the ability to move, to speak, to sing, to make jokes to do anything at all but lay in bed. It's an experience I wouldn't curse my greatest enemies with. He died in the middle of the night while my sister was with him. If he had last words, we would have no way of knowing because brain cancer is a fuck ass that ruins everything. We had one funeral here where we live that a million people attended. We had another one months later in his hometown. So there was a good four months there where he had died but he wasn't put to rest. Even after that, he wasn't put to rest in my head. Dumb jokes, little habits, things about the way he spoke, the songs he loved, they all linger. I'm never not in the dark space, and that's the final lesson. There might never be an actual resolution, a coda, and that's okay. Coda signed most of their works with a symbol of three dots that looks suspiciously like the logical symbol for because. 
why does Koda make games? Because. Why does Davy need to see himself in other people's works? Because. Why did I make this video? Because. Why did my dad die? Because. Why do I still get up every day even when depression eats away at me? Because. Because that's life.